Hello guys, welcome to Simply Learn's live session. Today we will discuss what should an individual learn in the year 2021. Let's wait for an ample amount of time so that few more people can tune in. By the time, please allow me to tell you that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So if you are the tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological trends, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you can never miss an update from our end. So we have a few more people now. Hi everyone, welcome to Simply Learn. So without further ado, let's get started. Back in the 2000s, organizations were utterly dependent on purchase servers for their IT infrastructure. These servers not only came with limited functionality, but were also very expensive. The traditional way of storing and managing data was costly and complicated. It required a massive amount of hardware and complex software to run. All these issues were resolved using cloud computing. Rather than owning their computing infrastructures, organizations were able to scale up or scale down resources based on the requirement. Companies providing these computing services are called as cloud providers. According to C-Sharp Corner, the two popular cloud providers in the cloud market are Amazon AWS and Microsoft Azure. Now, let's take a step back and talk about a question. What should an individual learn in the year 2021? Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure? Though this question is tricky, we need to understand which cloud provider is the best option to choose. Now, let's take a brief look at both of these cloud providers. Amazon Web Services is an evolving cloud computing platform that offers various services such as compute power, storage, database, content delivery, and other resources to help business scale and grow. AWS services are provided based on a subscription basis. Similarly, Microsoft Azure provides a set of cloud services to design, create, and monitor applications on a network. Talking about the general features, Amazon Web Services was established in the year 2006. Today, it holds a market share of 31.7%, whereas Microsoft Azure was started in the year 2010 and now has a market share up to 16.8%. Amazon AWS is the world's most broadly adopted cloud platform. It offers up to 165 services globally. These services are used by millions of companies like Spotify, Netflix, Facebook, BBC, etc. Talking about Netflix, the company moved its IT operations to AWS in the year 2009. AWS was able to solve the company's scalability and data management issues. Azure offers several services in various categories, including artificial intelligence, analytics, containers, IoT, and many more. These services are used by many famous companies like Accenture, LinkedIn, Stack, eBay, and Samsung. Accenture chose Microsoft Azure to boost productivity and provide better security to its employees. The AWS pricing model is based on an hourly basis. With AWS, every individual pays only for the services that are required for his work. Every person only pays for the services he consumes. Azure pricing is charged on a per-minute basis. The payment system is very simple and doesn't involve any long-term contracts. Microsoft Azure is free of upfront costs and cancellation fees and only users pay for the resources they consume. With Azure and Amazon AWS, there are no additional costs or termination fees. Moving on to the next factor, let's talk about availability zones. Availability zones are isolated data centers with independent power and networking. These zones protect applications and files from data center failures. In total, AWS has nearly 77 availability zones within 24 geographic regions around the world. The company plans to establish nine more AWS availability zones and three more AWS regions in Indonesia, Japan, and Spain. On the other hand, Microsoft Azure has many isolated availability zones. These zones are located within an 
Azure region and they provide fast network connectivity. Azure has 44 availability zones around the world. The company is planning to launch 12 more zones. Now, after discussing the availability zones, let's talk about the services. The services that I am going to compare here come under the following domains. Compute, Storage, Database, Security, and finally, Networking. AWS and Azure provide a wide variety of services with low migration costs so that every individual can shift his or her current traditional infrastructure to cloud platform very easily. AWS EC2 is a suitable example of compute services. EC2 is a web service that aims to make life easier for developers by providing secure and resizable compute capacity in the cloud. It can be integrated to several other services like S3, IAM, CloudFormation, etc. Azure has a small service called Azure Virtual Machine Image. It helps the developers to develop and design identical virtual machines in the matter of minutes. Azure Virtual Machines are becoming more popular among IT infrastructures. These machines let an individual create and use virtual machines in the cloud as IaaS or infrastructure as a service. Virtual machines can be created using Azure Portal, Azure PowerShell and ARM templates, Azure CLI or Client Software Development Kits. Next comes Amazon S3. It is the best example for storage service. Simple Storage Service is an object storage service designed to store and recover any information from anywhere via the Internet. Amazon S3 facilitates storage through a web service interface. The service provides 99.9% .9 durability and 99.9% .9 availability of objects. It has the capacity of storing computer files up to 5 terabytes in size. On the other hand, Azure provides a similar service called Blob Storage Service. This service provides a large amount of storage and is highly scalable. It stores an object in the tires depending on how often the data is being accessed. Blob Storage supports widely used frameworks like Java, .NET, Python and Node.js. It is the only cloud storage service in Microsoft Azure that offers a premium SSD-based object storage tire for low latency networks. AWS provides a secure cloud platform where every individual can manage and deploy their applications. Compared to the on-premises environment, AWS security offers a high level of data protection at a lower cost. For security purposes, IAM is a suitable service. AWS Identity and Access Management is a cloud service that controls and manages AWS resources securely. It has no upfront cost, also gives a facility to create and maintain services within a specific set of users on your AWS resources. In Microsoft Azure, Azure Active Directory or in short also called as Azure AD is a web service which provides MFA multi-factor authentication features to users in order to protect their data from cyber attacks. Next is Amazon RDS. It is a web service designed to simplify the setup operation and scaling of a relational database. It is simple to set up, use and scale when required by users. It provides inexpensive and resizable capacity and automates several tasks such as hardware provisioning, database setup, patching and backups. On the other side, the Azure SQL database automatically updates and backups data in order to focus on the development of applications. Not just that, it also manages database services and responds to client requirements. Client requirements such as scalability of a service, data backup and high availability of database. Similarly, these cloud providers have plenty of services that help users build and deploy their applications effectively. Moving on to the next topic, let us focus on integrating AWS and Azure with open source tools. Now, we will explain how to build a pipeline using Jenkins along with one of the services of Amazon Web Services, that is the EC2. In this integration process, we have a sample Python application called as a Docker file. This Docker file will consist of a Python-based image. 
The Docker file builds a pipeline in order to create a Docker image upon pushing the code to the repository. Later, the new image is used to start a new AWS service on an ECS cluster. Now, let's have a look at how the integration of open source tools happen in Azure. In your Azure Cloud application, DevOps tools like Docker, Maven and Jenkins can be integrated. In case you want to integrate the Jenkins pipeline, go to Project and create a subscription followed by Jenkins. You can specify the required filters based on your requirement. Then choose your endpoint for Azure DevOps to communicate with Jenkins. So that was all about Amazon AWS and Microsoft Azure. Both AWS and Azure are honored to be on top of all other cloud providers. Both provide all necessary features like scalability, high availability and security. But the moment I hear about choosing the best one, I have to say that all that depends upon the individual business needs. Both cloud providers are the certified ones that hold immense value in the current cloud service market. So this was all about Amazon AWS versus Microsoft Azure. With that, we have reached the end of the session. I hope you guys have found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and don't forget to get subscribed to our channel and stay updated about more tutorials and live sessions.